All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm the lead developer for the Fuda Keyboard Project. Um, not to be confused with the other Alex who's working on Image. Um, all right. So hopefully you all know about these typefighters, keyboards. They're pretty simple hardware, right? So they all have a mechanical component, uh, you know, with a typewriter, with the force of your finger, it prints a letter on a piece of paper. Um, with a PC keyboard, um, it, it bridges an electrical uh, circuit to send a signal to your computer. They're pretty simple conceptually. You know, they're just pieces of hardware. They do exactly what you expect. And there's no mysterious entity that's seeing everything you're doing. Um, and then touchscreen phones were invented, and now the keyboard no longer exists as a physical entity. There's an app on a phone that looks and acts like a keyboard, but it's just a piece of software. And the thing about software is that it can work against you in hidden ways. It can work to serve the companies, and as we've seen over the past like, decade, uh, software has become increasingly developed to serve its creators more than the users. So I'd like to bring your attention to this button that's in, uh, in, in Microsoft Swift Key, a uh, very popular Android keyboard. Um, so as you all know, AI is a, a big hype these days. Um, and of course, Microsoft is desperate for you to use their AI and not anybody else's. So they decided to add this button to the keyboard. And you know, it can be useful. It can rewrite your you know, messages to sound more professional, or it can check your grammar. Um, but the thing about this AI is that it runs in the cloud, and the cloud is just somebody else's computer. So what this means is whenever you tap this button on your keyboard, it sends everything you typed in that text field to somebody else's computer. Um, and if, if you look, look at their privacy policy, um, they say they may then go and train AI models on your data. Um, and they might have co human contractors review that to make sure their models are working well or whatever. Google has something similar for their voice input. Uh, if you opt in, uh, it'll save audio recordings of every time you use voice input. And they'll use that to train their AI. At least it's opt-in with Google, so I guess that's good, right? Well, in 2019, Lewis Rossman did a video where he logged into his Google activity. And what he found out was that Google had actually opted him into this automatically. And they stored every voice recording over the past like five years of everything he's ever said into <coughs> Google's voice input. And it's all indexed, easily searchable, you know, sorted by date. Um, easy for any hacker to uh, look at. Uh, I believe it's different now. I think these days it's actually opt-in and they don't associate it with your account, but hey, I guess they collected enough data for their voice. I mean, so think about it like this. Uh, you're talking with a friend, maybe you're discussing some sensitive medical issue or you have some million dollar patent idea, or maybe you're just privacy conscious in general. So you decide to use this secure app um, that's super secure, right? It's like end-to-end -end encrypted, it's open source. It's completely unbreakable, right? Um, well, if you go then and use a feature in your keyboard that just uploads your messages to their servers, suddenly none of that encryption matters anymore. Uh, your, data, your messages just got uploaded to somebody else's computer, just in plain text there, probably. And you know the company may then go and uh, have contractors read your, your messages, and that's bad, right? Like, okay, and you you might think, okay, well, if you just never use any AI features, if you go into privacy settings, and actually in SwiftKey, uh, there's a setting to share data for ads personalization, and it's enabled by default. Um, I don't know why you need ads personalization in your keyboard, but anyway, even if you go and disable all that, um, it, it still sends telemetry. And yeah, I don't know what's inside those requests because it's TLS encrypted and Android has made it difficult to um, look into that. So where did this go wrong? Um, 
I think it went wrong when we started accepting keyboards connecting to the internet. I mean, like, it would be crazy if you had a PC keyboard that um, connects to the internet and you had no way of controlling that. Like, that would be crazy. Um, but on a mobile, it's just normal. Um, I think we should be able to trust our keyboards and you know, we type everything through them. Um, everything on your phone is written with your phone's keyboard. Um, so uh, there's alternative keyboards. Android lets you install different keyboards and there's already like a bunch of open source keyboards I've listed here and you know, they're more privacy respectful. They don't have any incentive to collect your data. Um, but a lot of them are downgrade in many ways. Uh, so for example, half of these don't even have like autocorrect or predictions. Um, some of them look like they're straight from 2010. Uh, most of them don't have swipe. Um, on Healy board, you can get swipe working, but you have to import a proprietary uh, binary from Google that somebody ripped from Google's apps. Um, so for some, I mean, for some people, these keyboards will work fine. You know, maybe they like the features these keyboards have. Maybe they don't like autocorrect. Um, but something I noticed even with privacy-minded people is that they will try to de-Google their life. They will try to switch to an alternative Android operating system. They will use alternative apps. And then they'll turn around and install Gboard. And you know, the re I guess the reason they do that most often is because these other keyboards, they just don't work very well. Like the keyboard is the most basic input method to your phone and it needs to work well. Um, so that, that's sort of the uh, gap that Fudo keyboard is trying to fill in the Android ecosystem. Um, it's this modern keyboard that has uh, a more advanced autocorrect, it has swipe typing built in, it has built in voice input, and all of that works completely offline. And the app never connects to the internet. And you might think, okay, well, how do I know it's not connecting? Um, the keyboard doesn't have uh, the internet permission. So Android has a permission system uh, where apps can request permission to do something. And our app, it just doesn't have the internet. It doesn't ask for it. And what this means is even if it tried to connect, uh, it, would, it would just get an error from Android. Um, so yeah, about the state of Fudo Keyboard, uh, it launched about a year ago at this point. In the most recent update, we've added multilingual typing and some autocorrect improvements. Um, in past updates, we've added things like uh, you know, accessibility support, so people with screen readers can use it more easily. Um, we have an action system with clipboard, uh, emoji menu. Uh, we also added key hitbox adjustment, so it'll look at the word you're trying to type and adjust the, hit, the hitboxes of keys to make it easier to type valid words and make less mistakes. Um, some things in particular I've worked on. Uh, one thing was faster voice input. So we use OpenAI's uh, whisper models for voice input. Uh, they're these open, weights mo open weight models that OpenAI released. And they've proven themselves to be pretty good at uh, speech recognition. But one of the limitations these uh, models have is that uh, the input to the actual model has to be 30 seconds. So even if you have a shorter input, you have to add uh, silence at the end so that it's 30 seconds. Um, and that's just a limitation of how they trained it. Uh, so I worked on a technique uh, a year ago to fine tune these models to actually remove this limitation. And thanks to that, the voice input can now work um, up to around five times faster with short inputs. Um, Another thing we've worked on, uh, we've been working on swipe input. And one of the issues we've had is that uh, there's not a lot of good data sets for training or evaluating swipe algorithms. Um, there's a few open ones, but they're pretty small and limited. Um, most keyboard companies, they will make their own like data set 
they will usually get just a bunch of contractors to swipe a bunch of words. Um, but then they'll go and keep that data private for themselves um, for competitive advantage. Uh, so we started our own website to collect uh, swipes for words. Uh, this was completely voluntary. People would go to this website um, that's completely separate from the keyboard, and they would be um, you know, informed that they're contributing, and they could contribute as much as they want by swapping the given sentences. Uh, with this effort, we've collected over one million words swiped, and we've now released the data set um, on Hugging Face. So if you want to mess around with the data, uh, that's open. Um, and I'll probably be releasing some of the model experiments as well. So yeah, um, in terms of the future of the keyboard, uh, some things on the roadmap right now are autocorrect and swipe improvements. Uh, the prediction engine needs to work better on low-end devices, because at the moment it can be pretty slow. Um, so that's one of the things. Uh, translation of the app, it's currently all in English. Well, parts of it are like translated, but not entirely. So you get like a half English, half Spanish experience. That's not great. Um, so we'll have full translation, um, better language support as well. So through extra layouts for different languages, uh, we actually have uh, a repo where you can submit pull requests for new layouts. Uh, so that's also another thing. And at some point, we're going to have a theming engine. Uh, so you can like make custom themes or have like uh, cool themes uh, that you won't see on other keyboards. Um, and another thing uh, is data export, because currently there's no way to you know, export the settings and words it's learned. Uh, so that's also another thing that will be worked on. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, I'll be heading to, I think, I'll be heading over there by the food to do my breakout session uh, where I'll be taking questions. And if anyone's interested, I'll be giving a talk about uh, machine learning deployment uh, with C++. So it'll be a, a bit more technical. Um, so yeah, if anyone's interested, just meet me there. Thank you.